Hi, welcome to my kitchen. I'm Lydia and this is Tyler. Tyler, yay! He's here with me. He was here before. Um, he's 14 and he goes to Oxford Middle Mills. School. Yeah. yeah. And um, he's a volunteer. He volunteers with um, our food program in Oxford. Mm -hmm. And it's free meals on Wednesdays at 5. So we just thought we'd do a little plug for that. But um, he's really helpful. Connie loves him. We all love him. And he always shows up, don't you? I don't think I've missed a day that wasn't scheduled. Yeah, I think you've been there every time. Only time it was scheduled was the Washington trip, yeah. Oh, yeah, that's right. Um, and. Tyler's also in interested in cooking. He's thinking about it maybe as a career someday. Mm -hmm. However, you're only 14. You don't have to decide now. And today, I'm going to show Tyler how to make a blueberry cake. Um, I got the recipe from Ina Garner. However, I, of course, switched it up. So what I was going to tell you, Tyler, is typically I'll watch a cooking show and they'll make something and I, I, I'll write it down like I, I stop it like 800 times. I'll write down what they say. And in this recipe, she used ricotta cheese. Do you know what that is? Yeah. Okay. Cheese. Yeah. Well, it's used in lasagna usually. Yeah. Okay. So it's like that lumpy, loose kind of cheese. Um, and I didn't have any, but I do have, I did have uh, plain yogurt. So that's what I made it with. And it came out so good. So today we're going to use plain yogurt, which is this. And um, so we're just going to get started. So a couple things I wanted to tell you. So I'm going to put all the wet ingredients in here. And the only thing that's not wet, but it will go in the wet, is sugar. You can always okay. kind of remember that, that sugar can go in the wet. Because, and the reason you put the dry in later, which is the flour, baking powder, salt, um, is you don't want to over mix once you have that in there but we'll we'll talk about that when we get to that point so for this recipe um, it calls for the other thing I want to tell you about this is um, butter two things yeah. one <laughs> I just discovered this too one um, this butter is not unsalted I always buy no. unsalted because I add my salt that way I can control how much salt like even if a recipe says one teaspoon I might put in less depending on what it is. So this, it's supposed to be softened. So that means it's not melted, it's softened. So there's a difference between melted and soft. And yeah. this is, this has been sitting out, but it's not soft enough in my opinion. So I'm gonna nuke it for a minute. Okay. <clears throat> Actually like 30 seconds, maybe not even. Yeah. Yeah, just a few seconds. Um, so you don't want it melted. What's the difference between melted and softened? Melted would make it a different liquid. texture. Liquid. Yeah, like a liquid. Okay, let's see how that is. Here, I'm going to let you feel it so you can kind of see. Okay. Just see how... Mm. Um, yeah, I think it's pretty good. Okay, go ahead and throw it in there. It doesn't have to be perfect, you know? But yeah, that's pretty softened. I'll take the ball. Okay, and I'll take the fork. <laughs> So this is one stick and two tablespoons. One stick, two tablespoons, okay. Yeah. And then the other thing I like to do when you're doing eggs, instead of cracking them into there, like this, like taking it and just putting it in. Yeah. Can you imagine why I'd rather do it in here first? So you can mix it? That's one reason. Well, no, not really. You can, you can mix it, though, a little bit. Go ahead and put it in there. Um, there's another reason. Can you think of another reason? No. Shells. Yes, Shells. that's it. What? Shells. Yeah, okay, I <laughs> no, agree. Because I don't know. it's, here, throw it in here. Um, it's just because you don't, like if you were cracking it in there, and then you'd have to dig it out of there if you got a shell in there. But in here, like that little shell, shell. See how easy that was to get out? Oh, there he goes. There we go. Okay, you can you can mix it a little bit. Go ahead. I guess we could use the same for it. Okay. Um, yeah, and then throw it in there. And then, so that's three eggs, butter. You can throw it in because we're going to use the thingy. Something else I like to use is this. 
to get every last bit of it. So mm -hmm. take that. Mm -hmm. um, so again, we're using plain yogurt. You could also use vanilla yogurt, but if you do use vanilla yogurt, I would cut back on the sugar. You know what I mean? Because yeah. vanilla yogurt has sugar in it. Um, we're gonna put a cup of sugar in. Seems like a lot, but it's a whole cake. So put that in. And then you can add this. Wait, first add, so I used, I made another one earlier. Um, you know what, we're gonna use both of these. Even though yeah. it's gonna be a little bit over, it's, it's still okay. So take that, open that one up. You can just dump it in. Both? Yeah. You can do it at the same time, you go for it. <laughs> it's okay, this is how you learn. <laughs> I agree. <laughs> so, put that in. Okay, then I wanna show you my handy dandy thing and see if you can guess what this is called. Don't waste any of it, get all the sides. Yeah. Also calls for two tablespoons of sour cream. Just this is a little bit more, but that's okay. This is seriously what makes a cake uh, good. moist and so good is using things like yogurt, ricotta, mm -hmm. and you can put that in. Sour cream. Um, obviously, this is not dairy free, but if you wanted to make it dairy free, you could make like a cashew cream, which we've talked about before. Do um, you know what cashew cream is? Yeah. You can just scrape it on there. Scrape the spoon if you want. Okay, this. Do you know what this is called? A grater. Or a microplane. A longer grater. But it's called a microplane. I have a lot of them. Um, so it's it's called a microplane, but you're right. It's like a grater, but all these when it's super small like this, it's called a microplane. <laughs> so, what do you think you do with it? A uh, great uh, <laughs> oranges and zest. Zest, correct. So, when you do this, I'm gonna show you. You can just you can you can leave it now because we're gonna put this on the um, kitchen aid. So you can leave this for a minute, or oh, we're gonna also add vanilla. I'm gonna take it out before I forget. Um, so when you're going to zest something, you never want the white part because the white you part the is, outside. yeah, the white part's bitter. So I'm going to let you try it without me even showing you. So this, feel that side, feel the other side, not too hard, don't hurt your finger. Um, so obviously you're going to do it on this. It'll just have flavor. <laughs> here you go. So put it down here okay. and then just remember you don't want any of the white. So typically... You do it like a couple times. Just look at it now. See if you got to the whites. There you go. So when you get to the white, you're going to turn it just like you did. And we need a teaspoon, so keep going. We're going to put in a teaspoon of this. About. Okay. All right, I'm going to, you keep doing that. I'm going to throw this over here. How's it going? Then the other thing you can do is bang this. Get some off, see how it's coming out? Mm -hmm. um, the other thing, it didn't call for any of the juice of the lemon, but I put some in. Because why not, right? Yeah, add flavor. So, yeah. Um, so, keep doing that. Oh, you're doing good. Yeah, that's looking really good. So, a teaspoon is this much, just so you have an idea. Yeah. Um, this is a cup and a quarter of flour. So there's not a whole lot of flour in it. But what which is interesting is there's a whole tablespoon of baking powder in it. So I'm gonna add that to this. And I don't know if I, did I say that the butter was salted? You said it was unsalted. 
it's not unsalted. It's I usually uh. use unsalted, but it's salted. So it's salted this time. Yeah, because it was a mistake. It was bought by, with salt by mistake. Typically, I always buy my butter unsalted again. Uh, so what that means for me is this calls for a teaspoon of salt. I'm going to cut it down to half a teaspoon. So okay. a teaspoon, half a teaspoon. So I'm just going to cut it back. What do you think salt does to a cake? Because you, typically you'd think, why would you ever put salt in a cake? I think it'd make it more sweeter. It does, exactly. It brings out the sweetness of, it, of the sugar by adding more. I did not know that. That was a guess. Very good guess. All right, I'm going to take that from you. Very good. And now you're going to gently and carefully put it in our, you've discovered what this is. A sifter. Yeah, try it. Yep. I forgot you're right handy. Um, so what do you think a sifter does, will do for all this? Uh, it makes it finer. Yeah. It gets out the plums. And it just, it's really about the texture of the cake. When we cut the cake, you'll look at the texture of it. That's just going, it's fine. So the other thing though, once I add this, you never want to do this. You never want to keep a mixer going with flour in it because it will become mm. gummy. Yeah. So this, when you, once you add flour, then you're only mixing for a very short time. So we got to get that in there. So what I did was I put, I thought, wait, wait, before you do that, put it in here, this in here, and then pour it in. And that way, if you spill, okay, so this looks like about a teaspoon of um, lemon zest. That's a good smells idea to put so in the bowl. Smell how lemony it smells. Mm. All right, and I have a lemon cut up, oh, up over here. I'm going to go ahead. I sift it. Yeah, go ahead. I'm going to put this in too. A little bit of lemon juice. So when you do a lemon too, when you want to squeeze a lemon, the, I don't think these have seeds, but when they do have seeds, you typically want to do this. You squeeze it, and you just that way you capture any seeds that come out. Just want you to make sure your hand's clean, and you would just squeeze. And you know what? I actually want more lemon. So I'm going to cut this. This one, yeah, these are seedless. Um, one thing when you're using the zest, you want to make sure you have um, organic because yeah. they put wax on this. On the outside, yeah. Yeah, so you, you want to use organic lemons. Isn't that used to make it more glossy, more appealing? Yeah, yeah. and more waxy. It preserves it. Sure. Yeah, yeah, I'm sure it preserves it. So, anywho, so I still have a little bit of yogurt on this, no problem. It's because it's all going in the same yeah. thing. All right, all so I'm just, gonna, yep, I'm just going to add this to our lovely mixture. Our lemon zest, a little bit of lemon juice. Um, so now you got it all done. Cool. Yeah. So there's a difference. Can you tell the difference when you see flour? Oh, I don't have it out anymore, but when you see flour, it's got a little bit of a chunk to it. Yeah. So now once we add this, Especially then... Especially if it's been sitting. Oh, you know what we didn't do? We didn't preheat our oven. We're preheating to 75. Oops, what did I do? 375, right? 375. Um, and what I'm doing, because I've made this cake a few times, I'm, my oven's a little bit off, so, but what I found to be the best was 375 for 25 minutes, and then 15 minutes I turned it down to 350, and it comes out beautifully. Okay, we're going to go ahead and add this. Again, we're not going to cook it too long. I mean, we're not going to rotate it, let it rotate too long, just so it, just so it gets incorporated. Here's another tip. Um, blueberries taste one. Sure. I made blueberries. I made this before, I said. These are pretty sweet, huh? Yeah. Um, I think they're better sweet than sour. If your blueberries are sour at all, you might want to put a little bit of sugar on them first and then Is that what add you did? it. I did with another batch, but I don't feel like this needs it. I feel like no, they're pretty definitely sweet. Definitely not. So we're just going to go ahead and add these. And that's it. That is it. And then. Just gonna let it, I kind of usually do that. I let it sit there for a minute. I'm gonna scrape everything down. I wanted to talk to you about our spring form pan. So this is how it works. It goes in here like this, and then you close it like that. 
and then it's all one pan. But what's so nice about it is when it comes out of the oven, you just release the sides and then you have it all on this. So it's kind of pretty to serve it on this too. So would you oil these? Yes, we are going to do that next. Are we? No, keep going. Okay, keep good. The good. Uh, so our oven's preheating and I like to use for baking, I use this coconut spray. Does it taste like coconut? No. It smells a little bit like it. But it doesn't add like coconut flavor, so go ahead and do that. And I'll show you one more little trick I like to do with a cake. Okay, that's good. <laughs> now take this and then just kind of do like, so you're kind of wiping it. Yeah. <laughs> Sorry. You're kind of wiping it off, but when you, you're going to save it and use it on this. Okay. okay. You never want to get this wet. Ever, because you'll You'd ruin it. it, right? Yeah, it would ruin it. You just kind of clean it off as best you can. And that's good. Okay, here I'll take it. Put that over here. Good. Make sure you get it all nice and. There's only like a little bit of oil right here. Take a little bit of that off too. Not too much, just so it. Yeah. And then I like to take sugar and put it on the bottom of this. So just take this and you're gonna sprinkle it on it. Okay. It doesn't have to be perfect. I'll take that. Um, it's so, it, this is interesting to me too. Watch, I'm gonna show you something else. Um, you can see, I'll bring this over there, but you can kinda see how this is fluffed up on its own just because of the, there's so much baking powder in this, that's what makes it rise. And it, you'll see how fluffy it is. See what I mean? It's like kind of fluffy. Yeah. So what I always do, because I've found this before to happen, is underneath it doesn't, in these things, sometimes the bottom doesn't get all the way, because you can see that thing Next. doesn't reach the bottom. Yeah, that's the word. <laughs> It doesn't always mix down there, so I always make sure that everything's incorporated. And that is it. And make this everything is, even, right? Yeah, you want everything even. That's why I love using the KitchenAid. Plus, I feel like I can walk away from it. It's just mm, yeah. going on its own. It's, it's a great tool. So, there's your lovely cake batter. I'm going to have you taste it. With your finger, it's fine. Good. Pretty good? Okay. So sometimes I'll taste stuff and decide if I need sugar. Okay, so it, this just goes on. More sugar or whatever, but it tastes sweet enough to you? Yeah. Okay. I'm going to just put a tiny, tiny bit more of this. Okay. Okay, go ahead and close it. There you go. And then let me just take this and pour it out. You'll do it this way. I'm going to let you do it. Sometimes it's you it stand over here and then because you're right-handed I'm trying to think how to, no I don't know whatever works for you for being right-handed now it's you're heavy doing, you're doing it with your left <laughs> you sure you want to it, it's whatever works okay here let me move this just a tad off the edge of the <laughs> It's going to go in the oven for 25 minutes and 375, and then I lower it down to 350 for 15 minutes. And we'll see you back here in a few minutes. We're going to get every last bit of it in our pan, and I'm going to show Tyler how we kind of shake the pan to make it even, and then uh, we'll show you our finished product. Thanks for joining us. We'll be back in a minute. For every generation, it has started with the call to serve. Discovering the purpose and the belonging earned with the title. Learning to dig deep and push through adversity together. Defending our nation and its people. It is a life of great worth and reward. But Marines are never really finished serving. Their commitment comes full circle 
visible in communities across our country. This is Semper Fidelis, always faithful, always Marine, marking a path for the next generation. Addiction is a dark place, but just as each new day breaks, there is light, a light that illuminates the people by your side. Out of the darkness, you are walking with 22 million others struggling with addiction. The cure to darkness is light. The cure to stigma is love. And the cure to disease is treatment. Join us as we walk into the dawn of the new day. Together, we are stronger than addiction. Learn more at chatterproof.org. Uh, we have put our cake batter in our pan, our springform pan, and then I just wanted to show Tyler too that before I put it into the oven, we kind of just shake it a little bit just to get the air bubbles out, and then just tap it a couple times. It kind of rises, so you can see a bubble right there, just kind of rises it. So we're going to go ahead and pop that in the oven, 375, 45 minutes. Actually, it's not 45 minutes, 25 minutes because then I'm going to turn it down to 350 for 15 minutes. Everybody needs to know their oven. It's such an important thing because they, don't, they do not cook equally from somebody else's. Okay, so here's our beautiful cake. We, I had made one earlier this morning. Um, so this is the finished product. Um, I was going to show Tyler this too. So I did put a little bit of powdered sugar. It just makes it look mm. kind of pretty to garnish it. Um, this is one thing you can do. I just happen to have this thing. This is um, the like when you do tea, you put like the tea leaves in this, but oh. it works really good to just sprinkle. I just go like this, and it comes out. Here, you can try Perfect. it. Perfect. But just don't dump it, just kind of. You, are you sure you're not left-handed? You always switch to your left. I, I, I switch in between. That's awesome, okay. And then we have some garnish here. Go ahead, you can put, um, because it's a lemon blueberry cake, it's nice to put what the cake consists, the, some of the ingredients are um, out so people know what it is if you're serving this at a party or something. It's nice to put some blueberries. That, and we happen to have our basil. My basil I started growing with a light. Um, it's so wonderful. Wait, oh, smell it. Why would you put that on the side rather than on the top? Do you know why we'd put this on the side rather than on the top? Oh, um, maybe I think it'd make it soggy. It could make it soggy because it's the lemons are juicy, so that might happen. So, there's our beautiful cake, which we will try. Yeah, we have to try it. And, and, would you like to see how to make oat milk? Sure. So, uh, another episode, we made almond milk. It's pretty much the same thing. Five minutes, I'm telling you guys, this is actually faster than almond milk because you don't have to soak the almonds overnight. The almonds you, you soak overnight, oats are so much softer, they don't take overnight. A couple hours is good. So, I have water and oats, that's it. Okay, I think I'm gonna do this part. Okay. Because typically I put this part in first and then add the water. I don't wanna mess it up. <laughs> you won't mess it up, I just, it's kind of messy. So I'm just gonna do it this way. There we go. Okay, so that's our oat milk. Here you go, who wants a glass? No, I'm just kidding. Okay, so now we put it on our blender. Turn it on. And I always start out slow. <laughs> Trust me, I've done it where you have it full blast. A mess. So you just start out slow and then you can can always turn it up. I'm really hoping I didn't add too much water. Okay, and then it's literally it for um, oat milk. It's just the process after that. So then I bought one of these. These are so wonderful for making milk. So if you ever decide to make your own milk, 
when I say make your own milk, I mean plant-based milk. You want to get one of these. And then, of course, you want to get the nut bag, the famous nut bag. So the reason this one is kind of brownish, that would be from the almonds. So still never want to get soap on it. You just totally rinse it with um, water. Oh. Never put soap on them. And so when I rinse this out, I typically put it here to dry. And then I just put it back in my drawer. So that's this. And then I bought these on Amazon. Two came, but I don't know where the other one is. But So I fill this up, and it lasts me about a week. Put a little bit in my coffee. But it's really good in um, uh, cereal. Like yeah. if you're having cereal, you can use it for anything. You'd use cow's milk. Yeah. And then just put it through. The other thing that I'm loving doing the oat milk, I'd switch to making oat milk instead of almond, is the oats afterwards because, I'm gonna wash my hands real quick because you really are gonna, I'm gonna show you what I have to do. Just make sure they're really clean and really get the soap off. But anyway, so after you get this milk out of the oats, the oats are left. I'll show you. So this can be kind of, this is, some people object to this, and I'll tell you why I'm making oat, because it is stickier. It's just a stickier consistency. So some people don't like that. Um, if you use more water, it will be less sticky. So this is it. And that, you know, I mean, some people might feel like, oh, I don't ever want to do this. There are uh, machines now. They make nut yeah. milk machines. And my daughter actually bought me one. I sent back, I like this better. <laughs> I didn't like it because I felt like, I don't remember why. Cheating. Felt cheating. Like cheating. I don't know, maybe you're right. <laughs> Could have been that. I don't know, I just, I felt like it just, just didn't do it as good as this thing does. You can see it's kind of sticky, it's kind of syrupy, um, but it's okay with me. So what I typically do from here is rinse my hands. And then I want to show you, I usually just put it in this. I always do it over the sink. And there is your oat milk. What are you going to do with the leftover oats? I'm going to show everybody what I'm going to do with my leftover oats. Here's that. And so typically I put them in here. Um, but what I do is I take a little fry pan and I usually make like a kind of a pancake with it. I like my oats savory. You can put syrup on if you want to, if you like it sweet, honey syrup, honey or syrup. I usually just put salt on mine and then I might fry an egg on top. But then I just, this is how I store it. You can freeze this. Sorry, wait a minute. What's going on here? Hey, how do you store it? So I usually freeze it or I put it in the fridge. But it's not coming out. Hold on. One second, please. Try to get the whole thing that's open into the bag. Yeah. There we go. And there it is. And again, you never want to get soap on this, so I always make sure I don't have any I have some soap in my uh, in my sink here. So I'll rinse it off and then I just let it dry out. And this is, so why would you waste this? You never would waste this. This is so good. This usually gives me two breakfasts. I do it in half and I just do, like I said, I put an egg over it with salt. Or you just eat it, you can make it kind of crispy. If you fry it in a little bit of oil, it will become crispy. Okay, you want to try it? Uh, sure. You're so game to try stuff, I love it. See what you think. If you want, if you like it, you can have more. And this, of course, cereal, coffee. Thank you so much for joining yeah, us. Thank you. Good. You like it? Yay! Mm. He likes it. Uh, I hope you come back. <laughs> I hope you learned how to make a cake. And next time you can show me how to make something if you want to. Thank you for joining us today, and we will see you next time. Happy Easter, everybody.